Let's return to This Week in America. Here's your host, Rick Bratton. Welcome back, everybody. Coast to coast, This Week in America. Harriet's Journal from Michael Springthorpe is an endearing animal story. Imaginative and charming, called the book with a tender heart and wonderful storyline. On a dark night on a dark road in northern Los Angeles, oncoming white light suddenly slanted when a scans from the roadway. But the vehicle didn't stop. Instead, it immediately regained its straight-on trajectory and came again towards them and thundered by. They continued on a hundred yards, and there they beheld for the reason for the vehicle's plunge from the road, a sight that would lead them after many days and pathways to the magic discovery of Harriet's journal. Michael is an Australian writer, musician, and tutor. He presently lives in Los Angeles with his wife Kate and many babies. Michael Thing- Swingthor- Springthorpe, author of Harriet's Journal, is our guest on This Week in America. Michael, I'm anxious to talk with you. I love the concept of the book. Welcome to the program. Well, thank you, Rick. Uh, it's good to be here. What is the, the inspiration? Uh, Give me the background on this story. Well, uh, pretty much the uh, introduction to a uh, meeting with... Uh, Harriet uh, was from uh, an uh, an incident that, uh, whereby we observed from a great distance uh, uh, this uh, this road. Uh, well, it was an accident. Uh, yes, we, we observed it, and uh, and then a little while later, we didn't know qu- what quite it was. Uh, just had seen this car take. Uh, Avoiding action, and uh, then we found the the little possum in the, the middle of the road where he'd been hit by the car and just and left. And he was on his hind legs, uh, on the hind legs, uh, pouring at the at the pain that she was was suffering, and uh, yes, it's a, a very sad sight to, to see her in such pain and agony. Well, yeah, your, re- your reaction is interesting. Talk about that and what you did and what led to your book, Harriet's Journal. Uh, well, yeah, uh, my immediate reaction was to to try try and help her, and uh, it was a very dark road, uh, and she, so I wanted to get her off the road. Uh, that was the, the most uh, thought we had at the time, and. Uh, uh, anyway, I jumped out and, uh, of my car, and uh, I, I uh, was uh, sort of ushered her off the road, uh, partly with her pulling her tail, and partly she was near, uh, so, you know, semi-conscious. And anyway, we rescued her, got her off the road, and uh, then tried to to find a help for her, but I couldn't get anybody to. Any vets to to take her in because she was classified uh, as an exotic animal. Uh, in, a, in other words, they were worried they wouldn't get paid. I don't know. Exactly, exactly, and that, yes. And that uh, that led to her culminated in us bringing her home and uh, caring for her from there on. And uh, after a couple of years. Uh, I wrote uh, the story. It was more than just the rescue, but that was the that was the the beginning of it. Well, yeah, that's uh, what got this relationship. Whole, and there was this relationship with us on the program. Is Michael Springthorpe? His book is Harriet's Journal. You find it at Amazon, the usual places books are sold. And if you go to our website thisweekinamerica.us, you'll be able to get information on the book. How did this whole idea for the book? take place? Was this something you thought about maybe in the beginning, keeping a journal, or did this evolve uh, as you were going through this recovery process with, with Harriet? Yeah, no, it was something, uh, the idea of, of of the journal, yeah, that was all, uh, somebody suggested I write uh, about, about it, it was a couple of years after, uh, the and uh, I think it was from a friend's suggestion. Yes. And, uh, the rest just came uh, from that uh, 
beginning with the well, yeah, beginning with the the accident and the oh, they, and uh, yeah, it was about. Uh, well, I, I me- it was basically from that suggestion. That yeah, and I mentioned this. I think you said relationship. Talk about that because this was. You know, I, I guess what, what a rescue, but it evolved into much more than that. And you go, go into great detail. It's such a, a, a wonderful book that you've written, Harriet's Journal. Talk about how this, this, this relationship, I almost said a friendship, and maybe it falls into that category as well. How, how did this evolve between you, your family, and, uh, and, and Harriet? Well, it's just, uh, it was a, a longer term uh, thing. I mean, I, I kind of, Imagined in the morning, I mean, so often uh, animals uh, don't recover from the shock of uh, of such a kind of impactful uh, accident. Uh, and we were not; she looked so bad uh, the night we brought her home, and didn't really think that she wasn't sure that she would be alive. But uh, once she, once she, we realized that she was strong enough to to recover then we and it was just over a period of time we had uh, that uh, that she uh, changed from a accident victim into a pet relationship it was just uh, I was going to say almost a family member, wasn't it? At that point, the, uh, the attachment yeah. that, that you that you had. Michael Springthorpe, author of the book Harriet's Journal, is with us on the program. We're talking about that. You know, it's interesting that as human beings we can feel pain. Yet, why is it that for many we're unable to comprehend that that animals can feel pain as well? Do you do you find that's true? I mean, they they have emotions. Well, it, it seems like just like we do. They have a what? They have emotions. Yeah. They feel pain, just like we oh. do. Well, this is one of the great things that's really, if not the greatest thing, that has come out of people's reaction to to the book. I mean, it's a, it's a very great human misgiving mistake to to see animals in a as non sentient beings you know yes. con- as though they don't have a consciousness on the a similar level to to human beings and it, it's an excuse an excuse for people often to be cruel or unkind unkind in some way and especially and in the case of possums in this country uh, there's such a a great uh, let's see negative uh, yes idea about them uh, and it gives uh, people a chance to operate at this uh, perception of of them as being uh, unfeeling, un- non sentient. Uh, in fact, they're a great uh, help to the uh, great uh, ecological, uh, environmental helpmates, which uh, is something is only. Uh, Partly being is, is only gradually being uh, understood in this country. Well, you That's yes, you ad- uh, you address some of those myths and talk about that. This is uh, possums. We really tend to treat them poorly, and it's it certainly seems unjustified, doesn't it? Well, it's, it's a mythology that's grown uh, yes. grown up with yes. the, the clash between the human uh, settlement expansion and. Uh, uh, just that, uh, oh, what do you say, <laughs> the uh, the meeting of of one species and another and to another because of the expansions of uh, the cities and towns and uh, the thing is that uh, opossums po- are, are great with uh, they're like a a, a groundskeeper. For humans in uh, suburban environments, I mean, they can be, they are omniv- omnivorous, and uh, which means they they kind of eat anything, and they are also therefore uh, they'll eat in your garden uh, rotted fruit or snails and slugs, or that kind of. But they're also uh, really great at, 
a tick uh, destroyers, which, uh, given the prevalence of Lyme disease, and uh, which is believed to be borne by tick, uh, it's ticks. It's uh, it's something really advantageous for possums to to be in the environment and to to des- destroy these uh, adverse. Uh, yes. Mike, Michael Spring, are, Springthorpe is our guest. We're talking about his book, Harriet's Journal. In Harriet's Journal, you really get into uh, Harriet's mind and feelings, is sort of uh, uh, trying to present her point of view. Talk about that or what that was like. You were that close that, you know, as you read this, you sense that you, you really know what she's thinking, what her feelings are. Well, uh, yeah. Well, that. Uh, yeah. Well, it's. Uh, I mean, I. Mm, how can I say? Yeah, I, I have this uh, understanding with animals, and uh, yes. in this in this case, it kind of manifests in those kind of uh, perceptions that she was having of the world around her, and uh, I mean, I suppose some was. Uh, We see, uh, yeah. Well, yeah. I, mean, I think human beings are often uh, decry those qualities in, in animals, so their their perception about the world around them, and uh, not saying that they know everything uh, in the same way that humans, quote unquote, know everything. <laughs> well, yes. But, but um, it's it's definitely a quality in terms of the relationship between animals and humans uh, that. Uh, that a greater uh, understanding by human beings of the re- relationship with animals uh, who would would be most beneficial for. I mentioned that you were from Australia. Is there a different yeah. bonding, a relationship, a a feeling for animals in Australia than than you see here in the uh, U.S.? Well, yeah, it's. I'm not. Uh, there is a, a great uh, affinity with the natural world there. I mean, there, to that extent, it's uh, it's uh, Australians are more. Uh, uh, how can I say? <laughs> Actually, the possums in Australia or are a different, uh, a different, similar, a similar to uh, different to the possums here. They are a different species, but uh, nonetheless, they have a, a close relationship in terms of uh, coming into the environment where humans are and uh, and causing similar problems uh, that uh, people get freaked out about seeing a little creature running around in their attic or something. Oh, yes, yes, exactly. They don't know about it. They're ignorant of it, so they, they panic, they freak out, they want to keep their... Houses and, and environments are safe, inverted commas, safe that they, they resort to the kind of ridiculous uh, things that uh, people do here. A lot of people, not saying everybody, but uh, a lot do in, in keeping this house safe from uh, oh, vermin, that sort of stupid uh, idea about uh, so the disease carrying and uh, disadvantages yes. uh, huh? these ideas about uh, carrying uh, what was it? Uh, uh, well, the ideas of, of rabies and uh, those kind of uh, things that, but they, there's a myth that these things are spread by uh, opponents that's all rubbish I mean it's just uh, those things are not uh, scientifically or so well, scientifically and otherwise uh, pro- proven. That's why this book is so valuable oh, no. because it does, you know, it shares your experience, but it opens our eyes to to the animal world in this particular case, possums. And uh, the book we're talking about by Michael Springthorn is Harriet's Journal. Uh, talk a little bit about it. We've got a couple minutes left in the program, but it's gone by quickly. Talk about how how she adapted to to humans being there and help helping uh, helping her 
nurse back into life. What was what was her reaction to to how did she fare at the hands of of the rescuers? Well, obviously, it would be a, a freaking experience for her. But you, yes, but I tried to to cover. I tried to show those things in the book that uh, would be a, that there would be a, a gradual understanding of between human and the and the, between her and the the rescuers as she she began to perceive uh, what situation she was really in. Obviously. Uh, a bit, she would freak out a bit, but uh, overall, the, the animal-human relationship is uh, manifest very naturally. That, yes. Talk about the in writing the book. I've read reviews where, in fact, a, a number of people said, "Boy, this is a, should be part of an educational program. This is something that should be done in." Uh, wildlife program, something that should be done in schools, that type of thing. What is your hope for the book, Harriet's Journal? What do you hope uh, the message is from this book? Well, I think it's it's something that uh, would be great. Uh, well, I've had, we have had uh, several schools that have uh, uh, purchased the book and uh, one particular and so I, I, I met a, a, a group of uh, uh, school, uh, ele- elementary school children that, uh, by Skype, uh, and we conversed about in, there in uh, North Carolina. And once again, that that thing of, uh, of their of their relationship and their understanding with. Uh, with possums was manifest, and they, and I, I'm sure it's a, just a great, uh, I mean, as a great introduction, or yes, yes, comment about uh, animals and humans, and once again, this. Uh, uh, it's not like a textbook. Well, you, you've been there with that relationship, and that has to, uh, you know, resonate when you're talking, especially with a with a younger audience, because this is again, it's not a a textbook. Uh, it's something that you've actually experienced. I got a minute or so left here. What has this been like? The whole Harriet uh, journey in, in writing Harriet's journal and what you went through. What impact has that had on on you? Oh, sorry, that's my. Raven Edgar in the background. I was going to say, it sounds like uh, another animal yeah. in the background there. Yeah. Uh, yeah, no, it's, uh, it's been great. I, ha- I have uh, had lots and lots of uh, requests to to write a sequel, and uh, to uh, which I have almost have finished. And uh, oh, great. Uh, and uh, it's been a great. Uh, it's been great to to have the response of people to it because uh, as i said before this uh, this is something marked uh, in, in a, in the united states this uh, bias against uh, possums exists in a lot of cases it's it's gradually changing because uh, and i'm hoping harris journal has had some to do with that that uh, people perceive them differently this tra- traditional or older idea that they were as a, they were negative and dangerous and a, a lot of other freaky things is is nonsense because and it's great to see this attitudes slowly changing and uh, the, uh, to understand that they're great in the environment and great uh, ambassadors for a better environment and uh, time that people uh, stood up and understood all this. Well, you've done so much to help those attitudes change by writing the book Harriet's Journal. Mm -hmm. Michael Springthorpe is the author and our guest on the program. You'll find the book at Amazon, uh, Author House, uh, the usual places to buy books. Barnes & Noble. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, In in all the usual places. It's there. It's Harriet's Journal, Michael Springthorpe. I'll spell that if you're going to Google it. It's S-P-R-I-N-G-T-H-O-R-P-E. 
You'll go to our website this week in america.us and link on directly to information on the book Michael has written. Michael, congratulations on a job well done, a book that's going to open and has already, already opened so many eyes. Uh, it's been a pleasure having you on the program. Thank you for joining us. Well, it's great. Yeah, well, thank you very much, Rick, and uh, well, good, to t- good to talk with you. Thank you. Look forward to uh, the sequel. I understand that uh, that's something you're working on, and hopefully we can talk about that yes, as and well. Also, well, there's another book I'll have probably released before the sequel, but uh, just in the pre-production. Perfect. A frog in these really cool sandals. It's called, but it's quite... <laughs> but, uh, but, I like it already. I'm looking forward to talking about that as well. The particular book we're talking about today by Michael Springthorpe is Harriet's Journal. You'll find all the information at uh, Amazon, the usual places. Find out more by going to our website, thisweekinamerica.us. And we're back on today's program after these messages. This Week in America is online. You can visit our website, thisweekinamerica.us. Scott Pinkerton, associate producer of This Week in America. Jay Anderson, segment producer. Ben Watson, webmaster. Otto Bechet, director of engineering and TV production. This Week in America produced and is a trademark of Blue Funk Broadcasting, LLC. For information on all of our guests and to listen to this week's show, our website again at thisweekinamerica.us. And I'm Sean Bratton, executive producer of This Week in America.